Bulls, the Toronto Raptors. We'll catch you all through the weekend right here on Fox Sports Chicago. Have a good one. So long, everybody. everyone. We've got a doubleheader tonight, Maine West and Fenwick, but first, Centralia and Galesburg. For the call of that game, we go to Dave Ennett and Norm Van Leer at Carver Arena. Gentlemen? Thank you, Ann. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Jam Pack Carver Arena. It's the Orphans of Centralia against the Silver Spruce of Galesburg. Winner of this game will go on to play the winner of tonight's final quarterfinal game between Maine West and Fenwick. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Ennett with former Chicago Bull Norm Van Leer. Two teams deep in tradition, which have waited a long time to get here. Galesburg hasn't been to the Elite Eight since 1976. Centralia hasn't been here since 1964. But don't be deceived because the Orphans own three state titles and they own more victories than any team in the history of high school basketball. Well, that's amazing uh, not to be here that long and uh, that far away, but they have a crowd behind them. You can hear it right now, but boy, it, it will be exciting. Well, they are led by an all-state performer in their point guard, Ty Moss, averaging 18 points, nearly seven assists a game. Well, he's another one of those uh, father-son combinations and the heck of a point guard. Not the leading scorer in this team, but one of the big scores. But playmaking, I like to throw back to that. That's where he uh, holds court right there. Now, Galesburg has an all-stater, too, in forward Joey Range. Well, Joey Range can do it all. The rebounding, shooting, he shoots 57%. And at Galesburg, as I told you before, I went down there to play against the firemen in a, in a fundraising uh, a tip we had, and it was a ball. I had a great time down there, and hello to Galesburg. Well, we should have a ball here tonight. Galesburg against Centralia coming up and back to meet the players after this. And welcome back to Carver Arena. It is Galesburg against Centralia here tonight, and let's go to the public address announcer, Paul Herzog, to meet tonight's players. For the Illinois High School Association of the city of Peoria, welcome to America's original March Madness. Tonight's class AA quarterfinal game in Carver Arena features the Centralia Orphans with a record of 27 and five, and the Galesburg Silver Streaks, a record of 28 and two. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition that has been generated by March Madness in Illinois. Earning a berth among the Elite Eight in the IHSA Boys State Tournament is a tremendous accomplishment. A special memento recognizing the 1998 Elite Eight teams has been commissioned by the Playing in Peoria Steering Committee. They will be presented each player and coaching staff member in today's quarterfinal game by a representative of one of our March Madness Experience sponsors. Fans of America's original March Madness, please direct your attention to the Carver Arena floor. Presenting them a memo to the home team will be Leslie Grove, sports marketing manager of Central Region for Nike. And presenting mementos will be Patty Bash, the Children's Hospital of Central Illinois, OSF St. Francis Medical Center. Now for the visiting Centralia Orphans. A 5'9", senior, number five, Greg Storm. A six-foot sophomore, Dominique Cunningham. A 6'9", senior, Gavin Smith. A 5'11", sophomore, Wendell Rush. A 5'6", sophomore, Derek Patrick. A 6'1", sophomore, Ryan Smith. A 6'1 junior, Jerry Pollard. A 6'2 senior, Ray Smith. A 6' foot senior, Maurice Faber. And a 6'5 freshman, 
Chris Carter. And now, meet Jason Russells of Galesburg. A sixth man for the highly regarded Silver Street. Jason dreamed of playing here on the Carver Arena floor with his teammates. Around Christmas time, however, he was struck with a rare disease which ended his career. Tonight, we are proud to present Jason with his 1998 Elite Eight playing in Peoria Memento. Australia, 6'4", senior, 22, Drew Murray. And a forward for Galesburg, a 6'5", senior, 34, Joey Rain. And the other forward for the Orphans, a 6'4", senior, number 50, Wiley Blair. The other forward for the Silver Streak, the 6'4", senior, 54, Mike Tapper. At center for Centralia, 6'8", senior, number 52, Luke Sharp. At center for Galesburg, 6'6", senior, number 32, Rod Thompson. At a guard for the Orphans, a 6'2", senior, 21, Jamie Bukowski. At a guard for the Silver Streak, a 6'1", senior, number 12, Steve Blasco. The other guard for Centralia, a 5'11", senior, number 4, Ty Moss. And the other guard for Galesburg, a six-foot senior, number 22, Taylor Thiel. <laughs> Assistant coaches for Centralia, Chuck Lane, Roger Stieg, and Jim White. The head coach of the Orphans in his 17th season, the last five at Centralia, where he's won So there is Rick Moss in his fifth year as the head coach at Centralia. 120 victories there. He has averaged 24 wins a season in his five years with the Orphans. 375 career victories for Rick Moss. And Mike Miller is among those Galesburg jerseys in his second year. 31 years old, a record of 50 and 8 in two years at Galesburg. This is his second trip to the Elite Eight. Well, this is what it's all about. You know, you put together these type of records and uh, type of discipline that's needed, and that's why they're right here right now. Jim Bernardi, Rich Gruby, and Jim Filson are officials for this third quarter final game tonight. Winner of this game will go on to play the winner of our fourth quarterfinal game upcoming between Fenwick of Oak Park and Main West of the Plains. Earlier today, Young and Quincy advanced to the semifinals. Young with a 68-50 win over Elgin. Quincy with a 66-53 win over Joliet. So we're set to go. Should be fun. All right. Joey Range, the jump center against Luke Sharp. 
Ball in the air, and the tap is controlled by Galesburg. This is Taylor Steele giving it off to Steve Glasgow. And the entry pass is Thompson. That was short. The goal is uh, in a de uh, zoned uh, defense right there. Backing up in there, and that's why he got the rebound. There's time off. Leans in, and time off gives Centralia a 2 0 lead. Very aggressive move to the hoop. He took all the way down, not even a fast break situation, and turned it into one. Up top. Good three pointer by Rob Thompson, who is a 51% three point shooter. He is their best from a percentage standpoint. Well, he shot that like he knew what he was doing. I think so. No doubt about that. 3 2 Galesburg. There's Steele. And I can tell you this, Dave, that will bring you out of the zone in a hurry if you shoot these two like that all game long. We'll see how that turns out. And at the other end, there's a turnaround, losing the ball with Joey Range, and it's taken by Pakowski. Up to Entralia. Well, Joey Range and Johnson, they got some, uh, some beef up front there, up in this couple body. Good boys, man. This is Drew Murray. Yes, sir. He is among their rebounding leaders. Now Moss takes it to the right side. Back to the left, Moss. Jumper around and out. Murray battling for the rebound. Steele trying to get it. Oh, out. Now, when I play, that was called a fourth down, but that's just good old fashioned hustle. And uh, Galesburg loses the ball out of bounds and just sheer hustle. It looked like he got pushed to me, but it was not a call. You see that here. Fighting, battling. A little tap right there, but lost its bounce. With the ball and a three pointer swatted away, but kept alive. Finished by Blue Sharp. Luke Sharp just being alert on that one as a reflection on that particular play by Thompson. Ended up in the hands of Luke in those two points. Sharp is actually the failure's leading scorer. Thompson fires. Good aggressive play so far, both teams. Seems like wherever Moss goes, it seems like they're going to get set with other teams. Well, he's in. No call. And go away with the ball is Mike Tapper. That close to the hoop, Dave, I like that no call. Like, you know, it's just too close. I was a guy that took a lot of charges, but I hated it when it's close to the hoop. You spent a little time on the floor, didn't you, Norm? Oh, man, I lived on the floor. Okay, Joey Rains muscles one up. It's knocked away. Taken by Pekowski. Mark lead pass to Drew Murray. And he has it stolen back by Joey Rains. Good defense, and uh, they're letting him bang, and they just called that one right there but that was uh, a play and that's the county just right and now it's that right but anyway it's a good pumping hitting stealing hitting going on there dave that they're letting him play except on this play right here i mean this is a takeaway could have been a foul could have been called but not so the county called for the foul and he he stopped i think he was like a good old fashioned defensive back coming up in uh applying pressure last go that's the field that can fire the three. Now up top. Yeah, that is a two-point basket for Mike Tapper. And it's showing some patience that uh, Dean Galesburg and they get some clear of zone that they're playing. They've hit a couple outside shots so far. And so has the trailer oh. and Luke Sharp hitting from outside. He's got four. And it is six five in favor of the trailer. Senior checking in for Centralia, number 42. And Blasco will bring it up. This time, Moss is, uh, is out. Uh, I don't know if he's hurt or injured or something like that. Good move for this early part of the game for him. Three point on the way, and an out, and a jam hole by Joey Rains. Outstanding jam, a follow up, and against the zone, that should be a no no, but certainly it opened those floodgates. Head miss shot, that's court call, back to violation. Pass a little bit ahead of Murray and hit him right at midcourt. 4.41 to go, first quarter. Galesburg out to a 7-6 lead on Centralia. Michael and the High Flying Bulls plan to drive the Raptors back into extinction, but it's a whole new world in Toronto, and the Raps are hungry. He got fouled, but Scotty held him up. Coverage starts in the game room Sunday at 1.30 on Fox Sports Chicago. From 
Peoria and take a look at Joey Range on the offensive glass. You see everybody's busting out, but the guy that needed to bust out. And uh, not a bad play, but one particular person left open and bam! Boy, what a dunk. Joey Range held uh, no prisoners on that one. He came down and just put it through. But that happens when you start shooting outside. It opened up a little bit. Shooting dead even thus far. Range, leading scorer in Galesburg history. He's over one, two, two, or three, two, if you wish, the way this going to play by control. Teal, three-pointer from the corner, too strong. Put back up. What a nice touch by Thompson. Rob Thompson now with five, and it's 9-6 Galesburg. So if you keep that up, allow them to do it. That zone is not going to work. At the corner, and that's a three-pointer at the other end. Uh, Ray Smith, who checked in on the timeout, 6'2 senior. Knowing this guy, where it is, he's been shooting well. Oh, we're burning it up. Things have picked up offensively. We saw that three for seven shooting. It's changed in a hurry. Murray has dropped away from behind. Foul call by Joey Ray. That was a good foul for that point of view. He got past. He had another defensive person picking him up. Reach from behind. Not a wise foul on yourself. Uh, Central, uh, one of those, you know, there's three substituting against guys in and out. And I don't know what the strategy is for that, unless you've done that normally throughout the year. Certainly, there's a lot of substitutions at this point in the game with three sisters left in the first quarter. That's what's going to Number 20, Bo Shea, you saw checking in the Silver Street. You see it coming, anticipation. Boy, I think. the floor, Troy Ray. He has speed for quickness. Quickness and speed, which is the difference in the two. And he has a combination of both. Joey Range will play his college basketball at the University of Iowa, along with his teammate, Don Thompson. Well, I'll tell you, that's a nice combination. <laughs> the coach uh, Dr. Tommy Davis has there, because these guys can play. Range making his present style of top end. Well, look at this. The anticipation. You can see it coming right there. That's, that's quickness. Now, all of a sudden, there's the speed taking place. Man, it's strength. I love the way he anticipates and goes after Coach Miller said that to be considered the greatest player in Galesburg history, Range had to get this team to the Elite Eight. So now that he did that with the super sectional win over Rockford Boylan the other night, that, he said, made Range the greatest player <laughs> in the history of this program. Well, sometimes you can be touted as a great player, but unless you take teams in advance and you get the support of the teammates, it does put a little ask us to buy your name i mean you could be great but greatness goes with winning greatness goes with advancing greatness goes with championships and that's all fun well he put the pressure on the young man and he's delivering so far Bo shea 510 sophomore brings it over the line we got these guys have athletic names athletic you know. Bo Bo shea. Shea. Oh, right. The oh, and for the weak side, comes scoring in Joey Ray. Beautiful pass. Nice anticipation. Joey Ray. Now at the other end, Luke Sharp answers for Centralia. They just continue to answer. Five points, game, 16 or 11. 43 to go in the first. This ball movement. The pointer is rattles in and out. I say this day, neither team is afraid to shoot that. No, that's big as that. And no one's taking a bad shot that I've seen so far in this game, really. No one is taking a bad shot. You saw what's in the system. They moved the ball. You got open, and uh, you take it out. You question one time Moss going in, and it's two or three guys. That's about it, but still uh, an aggressive play. Foul was called on Blasco. That's his first. Centralia will inbound. Send it way out high, and there's Joey Rage off the hands of Greg Storm, and then a foul as Galesburg had a breakaway. Now Joey Range, uh, uh, along you know with Thompson, I mean this, these guys play defense along with the offense. That's what the beauty of this whole thing. Still a little bump that there going up, had enough uh, savvy to put the ball up as he was fouled. This is pays off. But Certainly some good defense to be played by this team. Drew Murray called for the foul, his first. Range at the line. 
This is the first one. Joey Range, a 65% free throw shooter, and Galesburg as a team, 67% from the line. Coach Miller says they want to get up and down the court and a lot of possessions. Well, I tell you, uh, Mr. Range had a nice form, but he just didn't uh, can him. But you're talking about sitting there and just taking the, his time and falling through. It looks beautiful uh, as far as his fundamentals. Just didn't make the free throw. Nice spin, nice location. Patrick Hanlon, 24 for Galesburg, calls for that foul, their third. 2.20 to go in the first quarter. It's a five point Galesburg lead. Centralia with the ball. Good ball movement. And Ricky Sterling stole it again. Well, there's some quickness on this team. Three point out of the way by Storm. Showing up the front of the rim. Murray dives onto the floor, and then Thompson dives on him. Jump ball. If I'm in, what you got? Hey guys, I found Taylor's father, Zach Thiel. He is father, John Thiel. What, um, almost won 400 games at Galesburg, and he's played for him. But you said the best thing is to sit here and watch your son play. You had a state championship, your father's had a couple, and now your son's played. It's uh, an exciting time for me as a father and a parent. I've got a couple of younger sons that I'm real excited about that are here tonight. We barely got them a ticket. Uh, my mother came in from Florida. Uh, this, is it. this is where you want to be in the last day of the March. First day of spring. We're excited to be here. We're starting into our game. I think we're going to be there at, at the end. And, uh, I'm really thankful that uh, you know, I've had this experience with my father. I think he's looking down from somewhere. Yeah, and you guys, it's the last time, the first time you've been here since you guys came here since day 59, right? Well, actually, we were here at 69, yeah. I, I come and watch other teams and never thought we'd get here, but... Uh, you know, I got a son out there playing with a good group of guys that I coached in junior high, and it's just been an amazing experience. And uh, God bless everybody here, and the IHF is the greatest. Okay, great. Thanks, and I hope you have a nice evening. Thanks. Back to you. There's mm -hmm, the son of the proud father and the grandson of Taylor the of John Thiel, Taylor Thiel. John Thiel took nine teams to the state tournament between 1956 and 1969. Oh, it's good, good, good ball movement on both teams in the play. And Luke Sharp, assertive on the defensive board, saved inbound by Glasgow, but right to Sharp. Good aggressive play on both sides. Moss will take the three, short off the front. Storm gets it back for Centralia. To the free throw line to Luke Sharp. He wants to send it back out. A little, little, hot, little hot skip. I tell you what, the Silver Streaks. Uh, they're showing some, some combination zone, man to man, it even confusing me on a couple occasions. I thought they were boxing one. At one point, they were top mouse, but uh, they're very aggressive. And as soon as that ball is caught by Centrella, they are in your face. They're right there, making it very tough for you to do anything. 80% man defense. Centrella, five, two, as you see, Dave, five turnovers, Gilbert with one. Range missed the three, the rebound. Wiley Blair for Centralia. Final minute of the first quarter. Score. The entry pass. Sharp. Swallowed away. That looked good. But it's two points. It is two points. No doubt about it. Eight now for Sharp. Here it is. And I tell you what that does is you see this. What it does right here. Well, he's up there. But it will give you the intimidation factor. And he got up on this one. Dr. Davis will love that. But it will have an intimidation factor if you continue to do that with Centrella shooting the basketball and down low. Well, oh, he's off the spot. Mm. Right, watch this move, Dave, and the ball's down low, and he's just going in there. I want Coach Brock to use him as a tight end, buddy. <laughs> Man, he can go two ways for it on this one. 6'5", 200 pounds. Ooh. Foul was called on Luke Sharp, his first. 26.7 to go, first quarter. Got Xavier McDaniel looks about it. Glasgow, high on the left. Now Boche, bouncing for range, taken away by Moss. Moss on the run, one on one, against Shea, spin. Swatted away by Thompson. <laughs> Beautiful spin, but it was all defense right there waiting on that. They're not allowing anything in the paint down here at Silver Street for Galesburg. Here's Moss. This move, right, Dave? Something like you used to do? Exactly. <laughs> and then it's not right out of bounds. Yeah, I know that feeling. Mikowski, bouncing to Moss. 
seven seconds to go. Look at that defense. I mean, just, just the harassment everywhere. Three seconds. Moss now looking up at the clock. Now he's going to put it up at the buzzer. Well, he knew what he was doing. By Moss. He knew what he was doing. Use every last tick of that clock. <laughs> And we've reached the end of one quarter here in Peoria. Galesburg leads Centralia 16 to 15. We begin the second quarter. There is the one-two punch for Galesburg. Joey Range and Rod Thompson. 11 of their 16 points here tonight. That's coming on the heels of them scoring 10 of the last 12 points in their super sectional win over Rockford Boylan on Tuesday night. Things got tight down the stretch. They trailed with two and a half minutes to go. Well, Rockford Boylan, they're going to play some defense on you, and they're going to be very, usually they're very disciplined. They were the only team to beat Rockford Boylan this year, and they beat them twice. Mm. Look at the action there. <laughs> I mean, this is just the way the game. I love when they play this. No, not a lot of calls. I like that. Let them play. Loss who hit that buzzer beater at the end of the quarter. Kowski put it on the deck. Now bouncing the storm. It's deflected out of bounds. I knew I liked them for some reason. By Field. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Greg Storm. A little fella grimping a little bit. Man. Better tend to that. I don't like my storm to be hurt. Moss walks it over the line. For a little bonnet in this one. <laughs> All right. Ty Moss had 16 in the super sectional win. He was only 3 for 11, but he made his free throws down the stretch. I don't think they're going to, you know, go 16-15. I don't think they're going to win like that. You need to pass the ball against this game. And it goes. Tapper. Mikowski goes high for the rebound. Well, they have some athletes on this team that jump. Both teams, good athletes. All right, bounces to Kowski, loses it in the lane, got it back. And the ball on the possession arrow will belong to Centralia. Yeah, I feel, honestly, that takes away from the defense of uh, approach. You get a jump ball out of it, and you still maintain to keep the ball. They always punish the defense. Wiley Blair sat down for Centralia. Yeah, Mock fires for three. Get out of bounds play. Got the ball there, and that was a shot. He, he just does not hesitate when he's open or going to the hoop. He's got a beautiful looking shot, too. Good looking shot. Time off. Entry pass to Rain. Strong. Very strong. Rain. Got that low. Now he's going outside. He's doing all his ways, you know? He went outside. Now he's inside. And we are tied at 18. And it's a pressure man to man. A little harassing going on by the Silver Street. Murray on the drive. That was a good drive. Took his man on pressure. Knowing it could be blocked with the athletic ability over Joey Range. But nonetheless, he had two points out of that one. Now Steele firing a three. That was way out there. That was NBA three. Steele has. Couple of three pointers to key a 15 to 6 run that helps Galesburg take control early in the game against Rockford Boylan. Boylan then battled back. There's certainly uh, a little harassment uh, going on with this defense against Centreller. That's going, uh, uh, I should say, Silver Street, Galesburg. And it's bothering him a little to get the ball over. But then once they get it over, start moving it, get the open shot. They're hitting right now. Galesburg coach Mike Miller, young man. Became a head coach at 24. Brought his Dr. Gilford team in here. Lost to the Public League champions and the state champions. Hmm. Title game. Well, let's put a body on here. Let's just let's put a body on here. I'll tell you, Silver Street's uh, pressuring defense, which what Joey has to do is start passing the ball a little more as opposed to dribbling on the coming across that way. If you allow them to trap you like that, and that's not uh, good. That's just another turnover. Hey, Dave, you are just talking about Coach Miller downstate uh, when, in 93. He was 26 years old, and what he remembers about that, his assistants were 26 and 20. His kids were missing lamps in the warm-up, and his assistants were sliding from chair to chair on the bench so that they could say they sat in the same chair as Bobby Knight. So we're hoping that's going to that type of situation here today. <laughs> Kowski called for the offensive foul. Rick 
uniform. Centralia Orphans. Five minutes to go in the half. Only one play. Galesburg the lead and the ball. I like to know the history of that. Why they got this name. Range. Poked away by Luke Sharp. the free throws and it is Galesburg leading by three with 449 to go till halftime. Yeah. 23-20 Galesburg leads the telecast rights to this game have been granted to Fox Sports Chicago by the Illinois High School Association and a reproduction and rebroadcast of the boys IHSA championships are not permitted without the express written consent of Fox Sports Chicago and the IHSA. 4.48 to go until halftime. Centralia with the ball, down by three, 23-20. And Drew Murray, it's deflected, Thompson. Lead pass down the court, Joey Reed. I'm telling you, he had to like a tight end going down the middle. That said, Randy like Randy Grossman of the Steelers. Going right across the avenue and slam ducking. Centralia's got to cut out the turnovers because that's what's hurting them right now. They're lucky to be this close, but good shooting once they're over. So they get it in to Luke Sharp. And it's taken away by Rain. Ellsberg on the run. Thiel yanks it to the hole. He was there all the time. Todd Moss, good defensive play, stood there. He waited for that one. Therefore, that was, to me, a good shot. Getting those close to the bucket. You see this coming down. There it is. Deal, boom. I mean, time off was there. Deal, he had to pull up, pass the ball once. But he was there, but no argument on that play. First foul on Field. And he was determined he was going to the hoop on that play. Well, if you're going to take a charge, you might as well, you're take, you're take you might as well give it to him. As right. opposed to Joey Range plowing in on your 6 5 200. There's a lot of concentration on the handling that basketball right now on the part of Centralia. Centralia, because that's uh, the turnover is starting to mount. And like I said before, they are quite lucky to be this close with those types of turnovers. Range out on the way. Steel, pump fake. And it'll send it back out to Mike Capper. Capper, a 6'4, 180 pound senior. Range. Gets it to Glasgow. And Thompson got it back. Got it back again. Glasgow for a three from the right. Off the side, Range got his hands on it. Good game, let it play. This ball foul on that one. It was on Kowski. All right, uh, good movement. That was a long range jump shot right there. Seventh team foul on Centralia. So Galesburg in the bonus. And right now, the 25-20 day for lead by the Silver Streaks of Galesburg. 20, uh, I mean, 10 turnovers for, for Central to three for Galesburg. And that's the story as far as I'm concerned right now. Because both teams are shooting well. And so turnovers are hurting this team. 10 to three. That's a lot of turnovers. We saw Favors check in and range. Missed the free throw. And then the other half star and fires a three. Now that's good. But now that's not for me. That's what they have to do to stay in this game and maintain that. Make it play D. Move the ball, get the open shot from that point of view. Not dribble. Each team has hit 3-3. Three, three. Thompson fires for three. Bounces high off the back iron. Good team rebound right there. Boxing out on the part of uh, Joy Range. Australia rolls high. I thought he got fouled. All to Range. And to Glasgow. Range for that guy. <laughs> Showtime. Showtime is in the book. I'm not one to love that right there too often, but that was pretty, that was good, it was so calm, and it was the people to their feet. And it was 27-23, lead by Galesburg. 14 now for Joey Range. 
Houston. Phil is still standing in this ballgame. Moss will step to the free throw line. Now you look, you look at this team and you see the breakaway right here, the little lob pass, and here it comes. Now, I didn't know who was going into it first. Whoa. But man, that was beautiful. It was showtime, it was good, and it was just a perfect pass to lay it right up there. But, and you see this play, Dave, you would think the Gelsler would just be running away from this team. But they're not. Only a four-point lead. These are both good teams. Yes, they are. <laughs> but it seems like the action's one-sided by way of pass break defense. And then you look up and the play is right there. First free throw attempted tonight by Centralia. They are the best free throw shooting team in the tournament. 73%. Moss an 86% performer at the line. And Moss now with nine. Both teams are uh, leading the seniors, especially in the starting four of brothers' team. They've been around. Moss will take a seat, checking in as well. Wiley Blair returning, replacing Luke Sharp. A little confusion in all the substitution. You know, almost uh, left four men on the court, but finally got back out there. Murray got a hand on it. Range got it back, bouncing ahead to Tapper. Range gets it into Thompson in the lane. Good D, but uh, that was a very, very good defense. And the storm stuck in there and stuck a hand in there. And now we have a possible three-point play on this. But you see the pass in there, surrounded by some Julia ball players. That's good defense. The bounce pass. Now Storm, if he would have slid over a little quicker to close that gap right here, he should have been down there. Not watching and showing, but close that gap. He might not have gotten a foul on himself. Thompson completes the three-point play. He has eight, and it's 30 to 25, Galesburg, with 2.14 to go until halftime. Coming up at halftime, we'll go back to Ann Warner at the March Madness Experience next door at the Civic Center. A great event, that is. Yes, it is. I remember mean, last year we were over hanging around. My mm -hmm. partner, Steve Cash, and I just did. He hosted at that point when he was with Ben Sports Channel. Had a lot of fun. Kaplan has challenged me to a free throw competition tomorrow morning over there. Kaplan, did he show you many sheets of uh, his office pools? He usually has 15 of them. <laughs> the Cappy man. <laughs> Shot good on the baseline. That's my brother. Right, Kaplan. <laughs> we used to work Thursday on one particular radio station. We had a ball covering high school sports. He's a genius. He knows it all. Rick Moss gathers his Centralia orphans around him. They're down by seven with 135 to go until halftime. 32-25. Centralia team won the Salem sectional, then won the Carbondale super sectional, defeating East St. Louis Lincoln, though they shot just 36% in that game. Well, I tell you, there. this is a crucial point with one minute and 35 seconds left. Seven-point lead by Galesburg. Centralia has to be very careful right here that they don't let it extend any more than this and come up with some type of offense or maintain the defense, not throw the ball away, because you can just as easily spread this out as opposed to keeping it close. Here's what they're playing for. Chance to join Whitney Young and Quincy, as well as the winner of our upcoming game between Des Plaines Main West and Oak Park Fenwick in tomorrow's semifinals. Minute and a half to go. Silver streaks, they're streaking. Defense, good defense, right over time on. Off the three. Range got it, and then an offensive foul. Moss took the well, that time he took the charge. Yeah, he took a heck of a charge for missing his shot of the air ball. But you know, if you go by the rule, you got to give a man 360 degree turn and a step before you call a charge. And I don't know if he had that one step to, to dribble the ball. It was very close borderline, but hey, give him the. Uh, it's the metal because to take a charge of this young man, you gotta have a little guts. Second foul on range. He sits down and Patrick Hanlon, a 6'4 senior, number 24, has checked in for Galesburg. Storm, one hand catch out here mid-court. These teams are in tremendous shape. This has been non-stop action from the whistle. I mean in great shape. They'll fire another three. And it's rebounded. Airball didn't stop him from shooting again. Reese Favors keeps it alive for Centralia inside of a minute. Reese Favors. 
This ball control situation, even though they missed some shots, has been in favor of Centrilli because they've kept the score close by not giving the ball up. Moss draws contact. And the foul is called on O'Shea of the Silver Streak. Ray Smith back on for Centralia. Storm taking the seat. Moss seems to play as if he wants contact. He, he invites contact. He goes to the board. He looks for it. Riley Blair returning. And Drew Murray will sit down. Centralia, as I mentioned before about the third time, they do a whole cell of substitution. I mean, they just come in and droves. Coach Moss says, if, if you watch him, it may remind you a little bit of the University of Iowa, where, ironically, where you got two players on the other team who are going there, but where you have Dr. Tom Davis who shuttles those guys in and out. Yes. Moss connects. Well, they can they use a little bit. They didn't have such a great uh, ending of uh, the season down the stretch run there at uh, Iowa, so they can they can use a little help. Here's Thompson. Up the field. Thought about it. 30 seconds to go. And another quarter. Thompson, three out of the way. Good. Line drive, three quarter by Rob Thompson. If I was in I would not take a, a shot less than a second left. Uh, so you want to add to that lead. The Gelsberg is definitely uh, can get a ball up down the court in about a second. That's what they're going to do. And I felt they were very lucky to stay within this range with the turnover ratio and everything else going on. Three seconds. I'll put it up. Air ball out of bounds as the buzzer sounds. Favors took a look over his shoulder at the clock. Right. And then put it up. And we've reached the half. The Silver Streets of Galesburg lead Centralia. 35-27, let's go to Yvonne Simmons. Thanks, Dave. Coach Moss, you're having some problems with the trap at half court, rebounding, and then some defensive breakdown. Well, I thought earlier we were doing a pretty good job, but they're uh, late, uh, you're exactly right. We just got to get them off the board. Just nothing, you know, no miracle work. They're excellent inside, and we got to contain them inside, and you're not doing a real good job of it. Okay, thank you. Go talk to your guys. Dave, back to you. All right, Bon, thank you. So Galesburg leads Centralia. Halftime, 35-27. We'll be back. Welcome back. Peoria, Illinois is the place to be tonight, and we're bringing it to you live right here at the Peoria Civic Center and the March Madness Experience. Next door at Carver Arena, Galesburg leads Centralia. And now we want to introduce you to someone that Silver Streak fans know quite well. For more on that, let's go live to Yvonne Simmons. Yvonne? And thank you very much. We've been jo joined by George Lundin, who has been involved with this Galesburg program, either, either as a coach, an assistant coach, or an AD for the last 30 years. He's retired now. He played in Galesburg team in the 40s. And this is about your 50th time you've been to the tournament, right? I think so. Uh, I missed it once when I was in college. I missed it in 1960 when I had a son born. We got beat that night by West Frankfurt down at uh, State. And I missed last year, but that's all. I've been to all of them. It's a good track record. Talk about some of the teams you've seen down here. Oh, there's been some great teams over the years. The Thornton teams in the 72. The great game between Galesburg and Decatur in 45 overtime. A lot of points scored for those 73 to 72. Normally, uh, you don't get that many points in those type of days. And... Uh, Great performance in Galesburg 66 and 68 teams when we got second in the state. Dale Kelly's 40 points from the center of the court to beat Vail Vail and oh, just a lot of things. Well, you've just seen a lot. Now we talk about this time as the March Madness experience. Can you talk about, you said you were at Huff Hall, then it was at Assembly Hall, and now we're here in Peoria. Any differences? Yeah, it's different. This court is nice. You're down closer on the feet, uh, floor than the other places. Huff naturally could get a lot more people in, you know, and, and in the 60s we played a lot of games in Huff and in the 50s. This was our first time since 76, 22 years ago that we've been out the state. Uh, the three-point plays made a lot of difference. Uh, I remember the night that the great player from Galesburg, Dale Kelly, had 52 against Rock Island. To get three-point plays in those days, he'd had a bunch. <laughs> okay, you know what, you should write a book. But you, everybody, stick with us because Ann will have more from the March Madness Experience in Peoria. 
And welcome back to Carver Arena in Peoria. Halftime, the Silver Streaks of Galesburg leading the Centralia Orphans by a score of 35-27. I'm Dave Bennett with Norm Van Leer. I think the Silver Streaks are showing why they're the third-ranked team in the state here with a very impressive first half. Let's take a look at first half highlights. May seem like a Joey Range highlight film. It's this is Rod Thompson, first of all, for Galesburg. And now the other end, Luke Sharp for Centralia. But now here comes Range. This was uh, the dunk of the night right here. Right? <laughs> uh, he timed that perfectly on that missed shot. Now watch him run the court. Uh, this is, uh, I told you, the combination of quickness and speed, which is a difference. Quickness to get to the ball, and he first start with speed to get that layup. A Ty Moss at the end of the first quarter at the buzzer. Yeah, he knew what he was doing in that. I love this kid. He's a tough little kid, and he does the job quite well for this team. Drew Murray here for Centralia. That was tougher than if I looked, Dave, between the guys blocking shots and everything. Here's a rim rattler by Joey Range. There's a tight end that's there. Try, get him on your football team. There it is. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that's beautiful tape work or whatever it is, but that was good camera work to get that shot. Our Ameritech first half stats. Centralia 10 of 23, Galesburg 14 of 29. Rebounding fairly even, but Norm turnovers and points off turnovers, key statistics. Yes, indeed. You always do that. I think the lead would be even bigger with this uh, turnover ratio. Galesburg leads it 35-27, third quarter coming up. As we get set for the third quarter, Yvonne Simmons is standing by with Galesburg coach Mike Miller. Yvonne? Thanks, Dave. Coach Miller, you guys have, uh, Centralia has committed 12 turns. You're putting the pressure on defensively, but what adjustments are you going to make? Well, I think, you know, we got to shoot a little bit better. Uh, you know, we really feel pretty good that we're up eight and didn't shoot the ball as well as we normally do. Uh, you know, Moss hurt us on his penetration, and, and we got to do a better job with him. Uh, but we feel if we can stop that and rebound, uh, we're in pretty good shape. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Dave, back to you. They've been in pretty good shape most of the game. Or well, either I'm getting off the old uh, sport. You're getting younger. Than that. <laughs> Glasgow coach and doing an outstanding job. Extends Galesburg's lead, and Galesburg continues a run which began at the end of the first half. And they're slowly pecking away at my way of adding on, I should say, to this lead. Could be dangerous if Centella doesn't come through with some type of consistency to get the offense going. Right now, you see the golden streaks or silver streaks got probably in a zone right now. They're on a 10 to 2 run. And Sharp can't answer. Murray got it back. Nice house oh, yep. Too bad. Good move. Good ball handling. Both teams going at it aggressively. Good Good hustle hard, ball. clean basketball. Wiley Blair got a hand on it, but the silver streaks keep it. Into the corner, Thompson, we've seen him hit from outside tonight, not that time. Well, this body's flying in this game, I'm telling you. Good thing that right now the no calls are a pretty important uh, to the play that's going on right now. And that's good. Murray. And we get a lot of charges, blocking calls, because a lot of people are putting their bodies out on the line. You can see this play right here as it all starts. That uh, ball spread outside, penetration to the hoop. And good defense. And be taking a charge by Tapper that time. That's the third foul on Murray. Alaska. The alley oop. Yeah, now see that that's what you defend against that lock. You just box the guy out and get into it. Range just couldn't quite get there. And that's good body, body box out. And there was a good no call as far as I, what I see right there, but Maybe a lot of people thought it was a foul, but that's his territory. He's allowed to deal with it. Lucky to get called going over the back. When you get down to it. Tom Moss. Kowski along the baseline. Sharp. He's fouled. Thompson. Commits the first. First foul on Rod Thompson. Well, you see the last, the last play here. He's going up. He's just there. I don't know. I don't know about that call. Sharp stood his ground, Dave, and just put the hand up. Sharp at the line. Two shots, makes the first one. He's a 75% free throw shooter. Nine-point 
points in the game. It's a nine point Galesburg lead. Make it eight. Sharp into double figures. Silver streaks. You know, in the first half, it's only 10 free throws attempted by both teams. Combo. And again, that could be a key because Centralia. Good call by the number two. They're a very good free throw shooting team. A little uh, aggressive play down low. And Joey Rains did a little too many elbow action. The physical play was good, but the elbow, raising the elbows is no no in this high school level. And that is a big foul, number three on range. So he'll sit down and 24 Patrick Hanlon comes on. Here it is. And you can see the all right, good physical play. All right, right here. But you see the right elbow go up. You didn't maybe you didn't see it earlier. But just before it was called, it went up. And you're gonna call that in high school. You're going to call that in high school. At least a good official way. Kowski. And sharp. And it goes Murray. Fouls onto the basket. What Centrella is doing now is starting to have patience to the dribbling around the game first half. So far, the adjustment I see so far the second half, they're starting to have patience moving the ball and trying to go inside and create some fouls. 54 Tapper called for that one. A little reach in, got it low, a little head fake, and boom, you got it. And that's not a bad approach to uh, go with this team. As long as you don't turn the ball over and give them fast break opportunities, you're in the game. Murray is also the son of a coach yeah. at Centralia. His mother is the girls coach. <laughs> in fact, the only girls coach they've ever had in that program. Wow. Fade away around and in by Tapper. They needed that. They needed that right now. They were losing a little momentum going down here. Still had a nine-point lead. Nearly lost it. Kowski kept it alive, and now he'll take the jumper. Good shot. Got two of that. I thought it was three, but uh, good ball movement. Double team on Moss, and he passed it over. A little penetration. Pop. There you go. Orphans within seven. 4.52 to go, third quarter. Last go. Yeah, they're starting to light him up again. And it's back to a nine-point game. Sharp over Thompson. It'll be Galesburg ball. When we resume, 4.34 to go in the third, Galesburg. Welcome back to Peoria, and we talked about Drew Murray's mom as a coach for Centralia, the girls' coach. She's not just a coach. She has 432 wins, and she's a Hall of Famer. Ann Murray, how's your team doing out there today? Well, we're not doing too well right now. Uh, we need to be a little bit more patient on offense, and I think we're in the right defense now. We're in man defense. Uh, our zone wasn't getting out on the three-point shooters at the beginning, so that's what we got to do. And now your team has made it here in, what, 93 and 94, I believe, and Drew's sister Jody was on that team, right? That's right. Uh, we played at Bloomington, and uh, we lost our first game both of those years in the quarterfinals also, so I was hoping we'd have a different outcome this year. Is it hard to watch? Uh, it's difficult. I keep stats, and that's the way I can concentrate on the game and the action. It's more difficult to be a mom sitting on the side than it is to be a coach. Well, we'll let you get back to your stats. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Dave, back to you. All right, thanks, Yvonne. 60% shooting by Galesburg to start the second half. They're not afraid to put it up. Neither team. I can tell you that. I like the uh, aggressive approach to the offense also. Glasgow to Hanlon. Tapper in the lane. That was pretty well because some Trillo playing a zone and you let the Tapper get in the middle like a spoke in a wheel. And you get in there, that's very dangerous. And he just put it up a quick shot. That was good ball movement and patience on the part of the Silver Streaks. That then goes Kelvin. Now here's Moss. That's Glasgow for Galesburg. Glasgow, a third-team All-State performer by the Illinois basketball coaches. And it's taken away. Steele with it, and a foul. Should be offense. It's 
should be offensive. I, I didn't see the defense uh, from Philly do anything. Oh, it's caught on Luke Sharp. I mean, all he did was stand there after he got the ball right here. And he put the wrap around. At least I thought so. I thought uh, it was really initiated on Gilbert's part, but nonetheless, the call was made. Second foul on Sharp, who will be headed to Eastern Illinois to play his college basketball. Yeah, Duckworth was there, didn't he? What? Glasgow. Cross, Ed Mikowski for three. Too strong. Bad foul on Norm Storm. I'm going to sell Norm. <laughs> Storm's <laughs> part. As he went over the back, it was just not a smart play in that uh, part, and then you can't afford to let these fouls mount up. It's understandable that you would make that <laughs> slight slip. There yeah. you see the three-point <laughs> field goal shooting. Right. Thirty percent for Centralia. And roughly the same for Galesburg. Right. Second foul on Storm. <laughs> Gets it to Thompson, high post, jumper yeah. good. That is just such a beautiful shot. Nice movement, ball, no hesitation. He's open, he turn around and fire. And you're slowly starting yeah, to just lead. Just thinking that, Norm, it's starting business. to get away now from yeah. Centralia. They've been managing to hang in there. Sharp shooting over Thompson. Big shot right. when they need it. And when you just think you're dead, show the little post of life and come around. 12 for Luke Sharp. And now Thompson trying to answer with a three and does. He doesn't put a lot of arc on those, but he manages to find the bottom of the net. Well, there's nothing in that. It's one of the prettiest shots I've seen on the high school level. That's just an outstanding jump shot. 16 now for Thompson. And the Silver Street fans are starting to get involved in this. He and Range have combined for 30. Moss stripped the, the ball and fouled. And he'll step to the free throw line. Mike Miller says when he first interviewed for the job at Galesburg, he put his name in consideration. He said there were 14 people there, uh -huh. interviewed him for three hours, and they videotaped it. <laughs> three hours is quite what he was expecting. Moss at the end. And videotape. And videotape. I think he's going to the Pentagon or something. <laughs> Whoa. Moss, perfect from the line tonight. Well, they were serious about uh, the camera. They picked a good one, my friend. Yes, they did. Maurice Fabers back oh. on for Centralia. Sounds like a kid yelling up here. <laughs> Look, the voice hasn't changed. <laughs> Outstanding job, though. 13 for Moss. <laughs> that was Norm Van Leer. <laughs> They, they deserve opportunities. When you got your heart and soul into the game, young people like that, we need them. Shea weaving his way into the front court. Bounces ahead, handling the layup. That was easy. That was a beautiful penetration. Both the press bounce pass. Pass that I like to see more often in this game. Just fundamental. That's all. Moss pulls up for the three. But this way it can get out of hand. Take a shot like that. Here's Shea, one-on-one -on -one against Fabers in a collision underneath. Yeah, no call in the foul, but just about a foul. There certainly was contact. There was certainly some bodies flying, but uh, here's the pass. And here's going to the hoop. Now you got to call something on that. On that particular play, something has to be called. Not just out of bounds. Let's go into the corner yeah. of Thompson and he steps. Well, you get the reputation of playing physical basketball like these two teams. Sometimes you come out and just let them go at it and not call them to, to foul it up. 1.38 to go, third quarter, 50 to 36, Galesburg. That trap, one, two, two trap going on here in the zone press by the Silver Street. And they fall back into a man to man. Which was called a foul. Smith will take it. Who did that shot? Ray Smith, he couldn't pass it up. <laughs> they seldom do it, Centrilla, when there's an opening, they're firing. The second tray of the game. Bounced into Thompson to turn it around in. And good. One of the things a lot of people want to call steps, but he maintained, at least what I saw, his tennis foot in the action there. He just what he was doing. 18 for Rod Thompson. Daniel with five seconds off. 
a few seconds. We called it more. Well, throw too much pounding in the ball out there. Rick Moss, the Centralia coach, very upset. Well, he sees his team losing grip there. That's more important. In every little uh, incident, maybe he's going to raise voice about it, challenge. But right now, the team needs to just kind of have some patience. The offense is just losing it right now, basically, because it's good defense on the other end by Galesburg. They scored, but 12 points here in the third quarter. 17 for Galesburg. And a three-pointer go by Glasgow. And they're starting to spread it around. That's what the beauty of the, uh, with the offense of Galesburg. You got one or two, three scores. But Ty Moss is basically the only scorer for Centralia right now. They got three players in double figures. Galesburg does. And Moss holding for the final shot for Centralia. Four seconds. Sharp puts it up. Off the iron. And that will do it for the third quarter here in Peoria. 24 minutes complete in this one. And the silver streaks of Galesburg, 12, eight minutes away from the semis. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. That young man is managing to keep smiling despite the fact that right now things aren't looking too good for those orphans. Down 55-39 to begin the fourth quarter. I'm Dave Eddick with North Van Leer. And Yvonne Simmons, a third quarter final game, and coming up after this one, Tom Doerr and David Kaplan will be along to bring you Benwick. Good and Tom is in town, huh? <laughs> Benwick and Corey McGetty against upstart Main West, Galesburg. Nice day. And Joey Thompson. Oh, Same sat down. A Look at 16 this. to 7 run. And they're starting to just definitely take over dominance physically. Basketball-wise, is just taking over. From way outside, good by Ray Smith. He lost his man, he fell down in that particular play. That being Tapper, and Ray Smith drove a long, more of a set shot than it was a jumper. Brings the offerings back to within 15. Thompson. Ah, oh, I was gonna say nice pass. He had the right idea, didn't execute. Field. Range! And Thompson to follow. It's just ping pong time now. It's just his dominance so at his best right now. Those two have combined for 36 points. And Galesburg with a 17 point cushion with 6.40 to go. Offensive foul. Here's the drive by Moss and the offensive call. foul. Good call. Before he was airborne, he even charged in, so that was a good call. Tapper heads out after taking that charge. <laughs> so after you hit by Marsh, he might get a little rest. Moss said he had looked forward to, to this since he was a little kid coming downstate with his father. Good defense in that part of the state. Going to the state tournament. Then it's one of the first challenges of life when it comes to sports at the high school level. Get to this point. Sharp the put back. And then Thompson the rebound. Just get there and have some fun. And the ups and downs and winning. And you know, your self esteem, all that kind of uh, intangible goes with it. The high low. To range and the foul underneath. Use some uh, good uh, athletic uh, skills there because a little hesitation, a little hang time, a little pump fake. You see the entry right here. Get the ball down low. Go up. Ah, you can't hold it. Let me hang. Boom. Just about made it. Got called. Uh, he's on a free throw line. Alan Ray Smith. It's Joey Range. Range scoreless in the second half. He had Iowa colors on there. Well. They are the Rather, Iowa is the closest Big Ten school geographically. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you get out of the state of Illinois? A lot of their fans will be able to watch them play there. Yeah. And I know Iowa can get Fox Sports uh, Channel. Uh, uh, I 
out of Chicago. And we have a lot of Iowa fans that uh, listen to the Bulls, watch the Bulls. Sharp puts it up over Thompson. Murray is there. Well, you're always aware of somebody back there blocking that shot, be it either Range or Thompson. They'll be there to let you know they're there also. Lasco. Thompson will fade away. Range keeps it alive. And I tell you what they do so well, Dave. They move so well without the basketball. They get themselves in position to score. And I mean move because they know they're going to receive it from one of their guards. See Storms out there causing a little. They call a foul on Storm, I do believe. Now Blasco launches a three. It's short, but range right there. Well, that just goes as a pass, right? Yeah, okay, absolutely. At least in, in his book, it does. That wasn't a shot, Coach. It's an it. assist. Yeah. Do it all the time. Entry pass to Sharp. Blocked by Rankin. That wasn't just blocked. It was taken out of the air and then the foul on the fast break. And you know this game's starting to get out of uh, out of control right here. This clock is unreal. You got some weak side help. That's what happened here. Good defense. Up and yes. Just took it out of the air. What it was. What it was. What it was. Here it is. And right there. Oh, man. He took something off the side of the backboard. Padding came off. Moss called for the foul in his second, and Galesburg in the bonus. Range will step to the line. Man, he's got some growing to do. Joey Range. Yeah. One rebound away from a double double is Range. Now he's 18 points. So is he. Coach has some growing to do. <laughs> He's a young man. Wow. I'm impressed, I'm telling you. Range makes them both. And with 4.50 to go, fourth quarter, Galesburg leads Centralia by 20. We'll be back. There are a lot of inspirational stories when teams come downstate, but none more inspirational than Jason Wessel, a member of the Scalesburg team that over Christmas contracted a rare form of bacterial meningitis. Jason, can you talk about your experience and what you've done for the team and what they've done for you? Um, I had I was in a hospital for like two months, and they came up for me every every day they could. Came up and saw me and were there for me, um, and they've just been great. And we're finally. At our goal. I mean, this is our goal since summertime. One thing you did say is you noticed that after this whole experience that your team is much closer. They have a lot better chemistry. Yeah, we, we're just like one thing right now. I mean, we're all, we're just so smooth. I mean, everybody knows where we're going. Everything. Thank you. Well, your teammates say that you are inspirational and we wish you good luck in the future. Okay, thank you. Thompson blocked it. Storm got it back. And Murray has it. For Centralia, out to Moss. He'll take the three. Off the front of the rim, he got it back. Rakowski. The shots just aren't falling for Centralia. And they're, they're relying on it. That's the problem. They have to rely on it. Lasko lays it in. With those shot blockers in there being range and Thompson, you rely on jump shots, too. What an inspiration, though, Jason Wessels is for his team. No doubt about it. As a result of meningitis, both legs amputated below the knee and all of his fingers on both hands, he lost. And yet, and nobody is smiling more broadly on the Galesburg bench than he is tonight. Yes, he is. 14 for Glasgow now at 68-44. There's time loss. He's being recruited by a slew of Division I programs, including, interestingly enough, Valparaiso. Oh, and Coach wow. Moss was saying that he and Homer Drew have had some interesting discussions lately about the, uh, the yeah. father-son tandem. Yeah, it be very interesting. They both had uh, quite an eventful week. 
Pasco for three. They're on fire, Galesburg. Ian Pasco. And I'm no pun intended since I used to hang out with the firemen down there. <laughs> three minutes to go, 71 46. And a few of them have come up to me already. Bikowski. Tell you, Dave, had a great time, buddy. Reverse, <laughs> evidently. Yeah. Nice move by Pikowski to draw the contact underneath. And a foul on Rob Thompson. Hotel changes here for Galesburg. Coach Miller is going to give some of his bench players some time now as Thompson will come out. You know, strangely enough, when they went into halftime, they were back out here in like two minutes. I mean, they were full of confidence in what they had to do. Well, they came out with almost six minutes on the clock That's at halftime, right. Norman. You don't see teams do that all that often. Not that often. They couldn't wait to get back out. Intercepted by Storm. No look pass to Moss. Shoveling to Sharp. Out of bounds. Silver Streaks ball. Over here, buddy. Over here. Over here, buddy. 2.36 to go. Luke Sharp. 12 points for him tonight. And now Joey Range will head for the bench. Six, 19 points. 14 in the first half. Joey Range, he may well be Mr. Basketball. He is certainly a candidate, although he's got some pretty stiff competition. We're seeing some of it here this weekend. And there's Ty Moss. Yeah, you can't beat just playing this game of basketball, having fun. And when you got skills like that and you put hard work behind it, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And that's what I see in these two guys in Thompson and Range. Not to say everybody else is not out there busting their rear, but when you have talent to do it, it's just something to be on. Ryan Wood lost it, and there's the lay-in to finish by Ray Smith. From Storm, yes. O'Shea. Storm nearly stole it again. 40 is Lorenzo Pugh. 6'4", Jr. Number 10, Ryan Wood. Coach Miller using his bench now. Good charge call. Here's the... A lot of charges in this game, a lot of defense in this game by way of bodies being in the way, and that's from the coach's standpoint. Give it to the coaches. Alfonso Pugh called for the foul. Well, you see how he has his team hustling on and off the court. Both guys. Talk about the A tournament last uh, week. So far, what I've seen in the double A's. This is uh, well qualified. Sharp. Out it goes, and a three-pointer on the way. Another one. <laughs> Eric Patrick hits this one. His first points of the game. Patrick, a sophomore. Yes, but it's intriguing to bring more of an offensive uh, game to the inside. Boy, you can balance it out there shooting. They will put it far away from the outside. Unfortunately, that's not going to win ball games. You need the inside game at times in that paint. Nick Young, 6'4", junior, called for the foul for Galesburg. The Silver Streaks will be playing tomorrow. Is there a train called Silver Streak that leaves Galesburg? To Isn't there a movie? Yeah, yeah. I was wondering if they got that train from there, huh? Hello, Chicago. Hello. Davin Smith, a 50% free throw shooter at the line. Put back miss, tapped in the air, and put back up and in by Gavin Smith. The trail is still fighting, minute 20 left, and they're still going at it. They're not quitting. Galesburg will play at 12.45 tomorrow against the winner of the game upcoming between Maine West and Fenway. Young and Quincy meet in the first game. Patrick missed it this time. The rebound, Young. Final minute. Not one person in the Central team played to pull it up and raise that. Try to compliment the officials for letting them play basketball, too, for the most part. But just let them go at it. Three pointer missed to the right. Put back up. Nope. Too much heart. Too much muscle. Lorenzo Pugh missed the follow. Got a, a little soft touch there because he had an easy bunny. Storm for three. Go oh, ahead, Storm. Get back in the D, dig in. 
And a timeout, a 20-second timeout taken by Galesburg. Joey Range on the bench, and our Lincoln Mercury player of the game is right there. No doubt about it. Joey Range. Joey Range. 19 points. I don't have his. He did it all. I, I tell you that. I, he was certainly close to a double double, and he was one rebound away. I, that was a while ago. Imagine whether he got it or not is yeah. almost beside the point now. Well, there he did get it. Yes. 19 points, 10 rebounds. This is not should have given to him. 50% shooting. Although I would suggest that Rod Thompson deserves honorable mention. Oh. <laughs> well, this team came out firing Galesburg, especially in the second half. They just opened it up and uh, inside, outside, rebound and physical play the whole day. Blocking shot, just like that. Wanted away by Travis Howell. Good time out on the part of the coach Miller to get these guys in. Everybody to get in there to play. The well, Silver Streaks streak their way to victory. 71 to 56 over Centralia. And they are on their way to the semifinals tomorrow against the Maine West Fenwick winner. Very impressive showing by Galesburg. Behind the tandem of Joey Range and Rod Thompson and Jason Wessels enjoying every minute of this Galesburg victory. Oh, I love this kind of play afterwards. I don't know if that's demanded, but I love it. I love to see everybody congratulate and deal with it. All right, let's go to Yvonne Simmons. Thanks, Dave. Coach Miller, you have a very talented team, but this team is very fundamentally sound. Yeah, we do a lot of good things. You know, uh, you know, with Joey and Rod, obviously we have the ability to explode on some people, but, you know, guys like Steve Glasgow and Taylor Thiel and Mike and some of these other guys uh, do a lot of good things, too. Well, you told Range to be one of the greats. He had to bring us here downstate. He's done that, and today he got to do this quarterfinal, 19 points, 10 rebounds. Can you talk about his play? I mean, he just does everything, you know. I mean, really, he, he's really worked so hard in his game. Uh, he's improved in every area, and, and he's just a special one. And not a bad sidekick in Thompson, either. Rod does some good things. I thought Rod played especially well today, rebounding, and, and uh, did a great job on Sharp inside. He was a really nice player, and uh, I thought Steve Blasco played really good, too. So we're happy to be in the Final Four. Well, you were fun to watch, or they were fun to watch, and we'll see you tomorrow. Dave, back to you. All right, Yvonne, thank you. So 71-56, Galesburg sends the Centralia fans home rather sadly, but still they had a great year. Centralia, 27-6, they finish up. We'll be back for more from Carver Arena in a moment. Galesburg advances to the semifinals as the Silver Streaks defeat Centralia 71 to 56 in our third quarterfinal game. So three quarterfinals down. There's still one spot remaining in the semifinals. I'm Dave Edit with Norm Van Leer and the one two punch of Joey Range and Rod Thompson really as good as advertised Norman. No doubt about that. It's a real deal right there. The combo is just outstanding. They rebound. They shoot well. They're up and down the court. They move without the basketball get the rest of their teammates involved. That's what it's all about. And they dominated this game and eventually took over the second half. Well, I think we decided our Pepsi play of the game very early tonight. <laughs> Here it is, this rim rattler by Joey Range. Well, you can see this going to the hoop and it was just one of those things and going down the other end of the court see this little lob right here is all set up. Hey, you come and get it because I got it to you. And man, they are on target and they're smooth. They know what they're doing with each other. That's what it's all about uh, as you play on during the finals. So that is our Pepsi play of the game. Galesburg now will move on. They'll play either Maine West or Fenwick in a very impressive showing. This is a team that was ranked number three in the state. Only team to beat Rockford Boylan. Won a tough game in the super sectional the other night. And they looked like a team that was ready to come down here and play. I'm impressed. I mean that from the, the deep uh, part of my heart. I'm in totally impressed with this basketball team. It should be a good one if they can maintain and uh, who knows what can happen. That's why you play the game. Well, they have a few hours to get ready yes. and get a good night's sleep and come back tomorrow in the semifinals. And 
coming up next, the next quarterfinal featuring Fenwick in Maine West. Then remember, tomorrow's coverage of semifinal action begins at 11 a.m. from the March Madness Experience. First semifinal tips off at 11.15 tomorrow, live on Fox Sports Chicago. For Yvonne Simmons, Nor Van Leer, and our entire trio video crew, I'm Dave Edit saying so long for now. Once again, our final score, Galesburg 71, Centralia 56. Tom Doerr and Dave Catlin up next with Maine West and Fenwick. The preceding, a presentation of Fox Sports Chicago and Intersport Television. March Madness continues. <laughs>